it, sometimes timing is everything when it comes to being a, a player, the media, fans, or whatever. And a loss like that in Tampa Bay going into the bye week is not a good thing because now we're going to complain about it and we're going to probably overdo it a little bit before they play their next game. And if the Eagles win their next game and they do it in convincing fashion, everybody's going to be like, oh, we're going back to the Super Bowl. But for right now, we're going to we're going to drown in our own misery and sorrow. And I'm going to help you do it today. All right. Is Jalen Hurts the problem? We're, I'm going to turn on turn to Jalen Hurts today because I feel like a lot of this so far this season has been thrown on the back of Nick Sirianni, which, you know, it's totally fine. He's the head coach of the football team. When you lose games, normally it's going to go on the head coach or it's going to go on the quarterback. And Sirianni has taken the majority of the bullets so far this year. But you can tell that this week that's turned. Eagles are a flawed team. I don't think anybody would, would dispute that. Their defense isn't great. Their coaching is abysmal. What the hell? Uh they were doing on defense. I don't know what the hell Vic Fangio was doing on defense. Why isn't Nick Sirianni during the game saying, hey, Vic, maybe you should you should bring your quarters up. Do you see what they're doing? How there weren't changes made during the game, I don't know. Injuries of Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, Lane Johnson was out. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to blame that, but that's been at least part of it. But the whole reason you pay a quarterback like the Eagles paid Jalen Hurts is to make up for those problems, is to be a difference maker. When, I don't want to compare him to Tom Brady, but when Bill Belichick had bad draft picks and made bad personnel decisions, Tom Brady was still winning because Tom Brady was that good. Great quarterbacks make up for bad coaching, bad personnel decisions by your GM, injuries and things, and things like that. And Jalen Hurts hasn't done that this year. Jalen Hurts hasn't been good this year. A lot of times I feel like we baby Jalen Hurts because he was one that long ago that we wondered and worried. And I was one of these guys that could Jalen Hurts be a difference maker at the quarterback position with throwing the football. And then 2022 happened and he proved a lot of people wrong, at least in 2022. But since then, and really since the, uh, the 12th game of last season, he's been a real problem at turning the ball over. Uh, just I'm reading from here. This was I grabbed this from Ruben Frank on uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia. He shares the NFL turnover lead with Will Levis, one more than Anthony Richardson. He's thrown 22 interceptions in his last 23 starts. And remember, when Jalen started his career, the one thing you could count on was he wasn't going to make mistakes. He wasn't careless with the football. He wasn't fumbling the ball. He wasn't holding the ball too long. He only had 12, 12 turnovers in his previous 25 games, so less than half a turnover per game, now he's almost a, I mean, he's thrown 22 interceptions in his last 23 starts, so you combine that with fumbles, he's way over one a game. So, like, turnovers can be fluky, and the big Jalen Hurts defenders will email me or DM me and say, that interception wasn't on him, Devontae, with his route, didn't bring his route enough in, or, like, you're right. A lot of times you need a trained football eye to see what happened. If a receiver's running the wrong route, if he's not running a good route, if a guy falls down, A.J. Brown slipped on that one interception. I understand turnovers are fluky, but they're fluky for everybody. Other quarterbacks, it's the same way when you look at their turnover count. The reality is that Jalen has had many more turnover-worthy plays than, than he should. His decision-making's poor. Um, he is not protecting the ball. His pocket presence is total garbage. And he is, it's pretty much everything across the board. His play is poor. And if you take out Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts' legs, you're, the quarterback plays even worse. Because in some of those games, the Atlanta game, the majority of positive, positive yards that were gained on the two touchdown drives were from Jalen Hurts running the ball. So Jalen Hurts' play this year has not been good. Jason Avant, who I've long been a fan of when he was an Eagles player, but then when, when he's done some media, and he hasn't done a ton of media, but when he's done it, and he's doing more recently in the last year or two, when he's done it, uh, I think he's very good. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not a, afraid to give fair analysis. Jason joined Anthony yesterday, and here's what he had to say about Jalen Hurts. Here's the thing. 
You can have guys out. You have, you know, your AJ, your Devontae, your Lane out. Andy Dalton wins a game with lesser talent. I've seen Joe Flacco go and take a team to a victory the other day. I've seen Brock Purdy didn't get a win, but still threw for 300 yards and have Juwan Jennings go for 200 yards. When will Jalen Hurts be the difference maker? He paid him a lot of money. And now it's time for him to elevate people, and we have yet to see him do that. We've seen a turnover machine. That's what we've seen. And that's just the truth. And everyone's been biting their tongue and holding back. When you hear Tom Brady talk about, he's not going to go back and study 12, 20 games. So when you hear Tom Brady talk about 12, 20 games prior, he is privy to information that we don't know about. Because of his relationship with the Buccaneers, he can go in and talk to Todd Bowles and say, Todd, what do you think about Jalen Hurst? So when he says that Jalen Hurst can be confused with the blitz and he doesn't know what he's looking at, I think that he's hearing that right from Todd Bowles and right from the Bucks organization. And that's coming from a wide receiver who is seeing things from an offensive standpoint. That's coming from a wide receiver that is watching and saying, <laughs> what's Jalen doing right now? Uh, it's four games. We've seen Jalen last year really, really struggle against the Blitz. This is, this is not breaking news. He also has done very well against the Blitz this season so far, at least through three games. Those the, the numbers would bear that out. Uh, so what's going to happen? Well, they're going to blitz him differently. Defensive coordinators aren't going to stop blitzing Jalen Hurts until he can consistently make them pay. And he did not do that uh, on, on Sunday. When wide receivers are out, when A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, yeah, obviously you're throwing a Paris Campbell and Johnny Wilson and, and Todd Pinkson and whoever else is out there, right? I don't care. I don't care. If it was that game where it's like, man, the offense struggled, they really missed those guys, this has been the offense the whole year. 